Hello and welcome to part two of this week's concept art unit. Uh, this is Mr. Shaw here and today we're going to be talking about uh, alien concept design. Uh, now the concept of aliens, the idea of aliens is something that people have been talking about for years and years and years and no one can really figure out whether they're really real or really not real. But what we can be sure of is that we see aliens everywhere in movies and TV shows like Home and Lilo and Stitch and Toy Story. Uh, we see them in shows and cartoons like Ben 10. These are all alien characters from the Ben 10 show. Even in video games, uh, Fortnite, one of the skins called the Behemoth is actually a little alien fish living inside of an astronaut's suit. So today we're gonna be talking about why artists create these aliens, how artists come up with the great ideas of these creatures that don't really exist before they get added into movies and TV shows or even into video games that we like to play. Now, one of my favorite concept artists, an artist who's designed hundreds, if not thousands of aliens for TV shows, movies, and video games, is an artist whose name is Terrell Whitlatch. Now that should be a familiar name to my fourth grade scholars because we studied Terrell Whitlatch uh, just before we started our uh, long distance learning here. Now this is a character some of you might be familiar with. He's a character from the Star Wars universe called Jar Jar Binks. Um, and Terrell Whitlatch is the artist who actually invented him. She designed him, she drew him, she took some ideas from different types of creatures she studied in real life, um, like frogs and lizards and other amphibians, and then she kind of mushed them together to make a character that became a pretty popular character in a very long series of movies. So we're actually going to get to meet Terrell Whitlatch and some of the other people who design aliens for the Star Wars movies, find out what their process is, and then we're going to take a look at how we can create our own alien. We can design our own alien. They can be any shape, any size, any color you want. Um, so let's find out how the pros do it, and then we'll try it out ourselves. Here's Terrell Whitlatch and the rest of the Star Wars concept design crew. You saved my again! What's this? A local. Let's get out of here before more droids show up. Jar Jar is a key character in Episode 1, and he actually was one of the hardest for us. Um, in, in the sense that he was going to be our really, uh, you know, one of the first pure all-digital character th in a major motion picture. But that aside, you know, design-wise, George has something very specific in mind. You may, you may be, say, be able to take that line, which is sort of somewhere right in here, and go... George came to me with the character and basically said, he's amphibious, He's tall, he um, means well, but he's always putting his foot in his mouth, and he's like a combination of um, Charles Chaplin and Danny Kaye and all those kind of slapstick comedians that ever happened. He's a combination of, of duck-billed dinosaur and emu, basically, is about the best way I can I can describe him with, with the skin texture of an amphibian and the color pattern of a parrotfish. And so we started really thinking about, okay, well, what are the, the things that, you know, we would kind of like to see? And we decided to give him different proportions so that he would walk funny. Uh, he would have a slightly different gait. So we, we gave his, you know, his proportion from his knee to his foot was a little bit longer than normal. It's something that's very subtle, but it gave him a really gangly type of walk. Well, first of all, the ratite birds, which includes the ostriches and the emus and the rias and the cassowaries, or when they walk, their their necks go kind of this bump, 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 and then they kind of have this. I'd have to get up and demonstrate it, but <laughs> and the way just even if you see a chicken walk, it's funny. It just is humorous, but it's like, it's graceful at the same time. I wanted to give that to this character. We shall make you bombard general. General? 
Originally, Jar Jar had short ears, and George thought, well, how about if he had long, floppy ears? You know, uh, they might be really funny if when he turns his head, the ears flop around. And so we did that, and actually, you know, it was one of those things where it's like, wow, that works. Uh, and then George, of course, wanted him to be very expressive. And so we thought, okay, well, what's expressive? You know, what can we do with the eyes to make them very comedic? And we thought, okay, well, they should be on stock so they can pop out. They could do all these things. Gave him a big mouth so he could do wild, crazy expressions. And so all those things, all those pieces start to sort of uh, blend together into creating who Jar Jar is now. Steady, steady. The biggest thing was finally was coming up with that concept drawing that George said, yeah, that's him. And then I did orthographics, all um, the side, the front, the back side, the skeleton, the muscles. My background is vertebrate zoology and paleontology, and that was my training. And so basically, I look at nature, what has gone before, whether it's a prehistoric species or a current species, blend those together, how do those anatomies work in real time and in real life? The people that I think were the hardcore Star Wars fans may have had a problem simply because he was new <laughs> and because he was kind of a funny, a funny one. Um, but children loved him. All right, so hopefully you got some good ideas watching Tara Whitlatch and the rest of the Star Wars design crew come up with ideas of how they design their creatures, about how that specific alien, Jar Jar Binks, was kind of built from an idea to a drawing, to a sculpture, and then finally being acted out in a movie as a digital character. I think that's a really cool process. And jobs like that are all over the world now. There are so many designers who design creatures for movies and TV shows and video games. If making up aliens and creatures is something that's fun for you, something you think you'd like to do for a living, that's absolutely a job a lot of artists have. So today, you're gonna have an opportunity to design your own alien. And here I found a whole bunch of alien designs all by the same artist. Um, and your design, your alien design could vary depending on what kind of creature you want to make. Here's a little alien that looks like a crocodile mixed with a person standing on two legs, a little bit of a dinosaur, a little bit of an alien. Or maybe you want to choose to design a robot instead of a living, breathing, uh, flesh and blood creature, I guess you could say. Um, your alien could be any size, any shape. It could be a big, frightening, bulky alien like this guy here. Or it could be a little harmless, maybe cute alien, kind of like this little guy. Your alien could take the shape of a recognizable animal from Earth. This guy looks a little bit like a hippopotamus. This alien is called Hat and appears to be shaped like an umbrella that's been folded up. So your alien can really look however you'd like. It could take on any shape you want. It could be just a tall pile of slime, or it could be a graceful, beautiful alien with wings like a fairy that it could use to fly around on. Oops, that zoom job didn't work so well. Um, so we're gonna take a look at the template that I'm gonna put on Seesaw for you. We're gonna be able to use those Seesaw drawing tools, and I don't want you to just draw an alien. If you have the time to, I'd like you to add some colors to it. Maybe those colors will tell me where it lives. These creatures seem to live in a watery environment. This guy seems like he might be from a very dangerous place and he has to wear armor to get by. Whereas this creature looks kind of plant-like and maybe he lives in a jungle or in a place where he could use these long squiggly arms to swing around in the trees. So let's take a look at that seesaw template and let's work on some ideas and maybe even a name and a little bit of a backstory or some fun facts for your alien. And I can't wait to see what you guys can design and draw on your own. All right, so here I am in Seesaw. I've clicked on the template. Um, you know, I've clicked that I want to add a response to this assignment, and this is Concept Art Part 2, your alien design. Now, um, different artists do this in different ways. I do have kind of a large drawing space up here at the top for you to draw and design your alien. Um, your alien can be kind of a creature, like an animal, or it could be an alien that wears clothing, maybe has their own spaceship, maybe even has a job out there somewhere in the galaxy. Um, 
Some artists like to start with the name of their alien, maybe some fun facts about their alien, some things that makes it special, or you could draw your alien first and then make up some information. Uh, the writing portion of this is optional. Um, you can use the text tool or you could use your pencil or pen to write um, the name of your alien or maybe some fun facts about it. But I like to start out with drawing first. And the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use my pencil and I'm going to pick a really, really light gray. Now I'm going to do this kind of in the same way I would do it with a real pencil if I was just kind of sketching out my character. And I want my character to have kind of a an interesting shape. So I'm gonna start with a very light gray, kind of a rectangle shape. I want my alien to be uh, kind of box-like. The body of my alien is gonna be kind of like a box. This will be the face and then the body. And then I want my alien to have kind of long, gangly legs coming all the way down like this. Uh, I imagine my creature maybe lives on a swampy planet where there's a lot of water. So he's kind of like a stork or you know other birds that wade around in that deep water. I want to give this creature some long legs. And to go with those long legs, I'm also going to give my creature some really long arms like this. Uh, I'm going to have my other arm up in a wave. It's going to be a friendly alien. Um, I'll just put little marks there. And now I can change my tool. Now I can go to my marker tool. I'm going to pick kind of a skinny marker, but this time I'm going to choose black. And now I'm going to trace my creature's shape. Now I don't want the front of this creature to be flat like a block. So I'm going to draw a nose shape, and it can be any kind of nose shape that I want. I'm going to give this guy kind of a weird nose shape. Uh, and then I want my creature to have little tiny beady eyes and kind of a, not quite as long as an elephant trunk, but something sticking out kind of down here. And then the rest of my creature's face is going to kind of stretch out like this. It's kind of a weird looking dude. And I'm actually going to have my creature wearing almost like a mask or a helmet, I think. So my creature's mouth will be here. I'm going to give him some teeth kind of sticking out. Uh, I think I'm going to actually give him four eyes instead of just two. I'm going to get a little weird up here. And I want to give his outfit maybe uh, some little marks on the top, little stripes. So this is going to be kind of like a shirt. So I'm going to do an open oval here to make it look like he's wearing kind of a shirt as part of his mask. Uh, and then I'll have his actual arms hanging down. I'm gonna give him long, skinny fingers, but only three of them, a thumb and two little fingers. Uh, and then I'm gonna give this guy some pants. Uh, but I'm gonna do something interesting with the pants. I'm gonna add a little pattern down here at the bottom, almost like he's wearing stripy pants. And then I'm gonna give him some nice, long, flat feet. I'll draw some little shoelaces on his shoes down here. And this is a pretty interestingly shaped alien. He definitely doesn't look like a human person. Uh, he has a really interesting, unique shape. And your alien can be shaped however you want them to. It could be a boy alien or a girl alien, or maybe an alien that's not really a boy or a girl, just kind of a weird thing, maybe a blob of slime or a robot of some sort. Now, after I've drawn my alien, after I've made his general shape, uh, now I can start adding color to it. Um, and I think I've shown you before, adding color with this highlighter tool is a really nice way to kind of save your colors to make sure you don't lose your work. I'm sorry, to save your line work. So I'm going to pick kind of a medium-sized brush. And now when I paint his shirt blue, I can actually color over my marker lines a little bit without ruining my drawing, without covering up all of that nice work I did with that black marker. So I'm going to give him a... Uh, kind of a blue top here, and I'll have the top part of his pants be that same blue color. Uh, but then I want to use an adjacent color. I'm going to use purple for these two stripes up here on the top. Remember, when you use that highlighter, if you color the same area with the same color over and over, it makes that a little bit darker. So I'm going to darken up his eyes a little bit. I'm going to give his pants some purple stripes down here. Uh, patterns are a great way to make your creature look a little bit more interesting. I can make that purple a little darker. Oops, I should be using a skinnier pen. Uh, but then I'll have the alternate stripes be this kind of pinkish color. I like the look of that. Um, and just so his outfit's a little matchy-matchy, I'm going to go ahead and color his shoes that same pinkish color. I kind of like how that looks. 
Uh, but then I need to make sure I color the skin of my creature. I want to make sure he's got a nice color for the rest of him. So I'm going to just darken up a little bit of his outfit here, make some shadow areas. Um, and I think he's going to be a green alien. I like green. He'll be kind of cool colored overall. He's got purple and blue and green. For my scholars who know what cool colors are, keep him all in the same family here. So here's his green coloring. And I think he looks pretty good. He's kind of cute. He's kind of ugly at the same time. He's like a baby turtle. Uh, they're a little bit cute, a little bit ugly. So I think that's a pretty good drawing. Now, if I'd like to, I can add some details about him. Uh, perhaps his name is, um, you know, and it doesn't have to be a real person's name. It could be a fake sounding name. I'm going to give him a nice alien sounding name. I'll call him a uh, Glogar. And I could write that with my pen here. Uh, I have a little wireless pen that I could write with. Or you could absolutely use that typing tool. Uh, maybe his home planet is called uh, Swampy. So I could type that with my keyboard. Or if you're doing this on a phone, you could use your um, little built-in keyboard there. And then I can just grab that text, move it down to the line that says home planet. And I can even shrink it a little bit to get it to fit on there a little bit better. Um, and then I could add some fun facts about him if I'd like, or I could skip that. Um, I think a fun fact for this guy, since he lives on kind of a watery planet, is I'll say um, he can hold his breath, breath, uh, we'll say for like three hours, because that's a really long time, for three hours. And then that'll give anyone who looks at my alien an idea about the type of creature he is, maybe what kind of planet he lives on if I want. I could even draw a little background in here. Um, that's totally optional. If you just want to draw your alien, you could totally do that. If you want to give me a little view of their home planet, that would be great. You could write their name, give me some other details about it. I have him kind of standing here in that swampy water. Uh, and then when you're all done, just make sure you click that green button or that green check mark up in the corner. Otherwise, it won't save your work. And once you've clicked that, I'll be able to take a look at your drawing and let you know what I think. Well, thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time.